Good afternoon. It is about 1230. Uh, we got here this afternoon at about 12 in order to do exactly what we talked about doing yesterday, which was looking into the two weaker halves and potentially combining them. Sadly, once we got into the two weaker halves, what we determined was that neither of the halves had a queen. Uh, they had very low population. Uh, a lot of dead bees down at the base of the half down on the bottom board. So both of those halves we determined were actually on their way out. They were essentially already dead. They were just in the process of finishing off. There was no salvaging the bees. Um, so what we've done is combined the two and you remember that each of them were three stories. Well, <clears throat> once we got to the combination portion, they were actually just one story each. Uh, they were just that weak. Uh, and so what we've done with that is um, put them together and we're actually just kind of letting them finish off uh, dying for the next couple of days. We're going to come back because we still have resources in there. Each of those two boxes has five frames, some of which uh, has honey, some of which has pollen, all of which are drawn out. And so come spring, we need all of the drawn comb that we can get. So we're going to have to sadly let them finish dying off. We will then take those frames. We will freeze them to kill off any kind of parasite or pests that may be on or in the wax. We want to make sure that that all has a chance to die off. And then we'll actually be able to use that comb in the next, in the following season to give the bees, the bee, the remaining bees, um, a boost. That said, we now are going into, uh, hey Becky, we are going into winter with 10 very, very, very strong hives. And you've heard us comment, or you've heard me comment on it multiple times with each one of the hives every time we do a weight test. A weight test, by the way, is nothing more than us coming along behind it and giving it a lift and determining based on that weight where we stand that by the way had a nice decent weight to it i just moved these two halves this morning uh closer together because of course we had one colony that was here obviously there was more space there but we had one colony that was there but since we were removing that we and we separated it because we don't want any kind of potential disease to spread into these other hives uh, we don't want drift to you know if a bee's coming in and she gets carried over into this hive beside her, we don't want anything to potentially get carried on into there. There was a heavy population of hive beetle in that uh, one of those two colonies, so we also don't want that spreading out. We've, done, we've taken measures to try to get those beetles killed off, um, but otherwise they'll get frozen and killed off in that manner. Anyway, so in moving these hives, uh, in moving these hives, uh, this one, not so hard but still had some really decent weight to it this is the one that we refer to as garrett's hive that's my nephew and then this hive right here actually kind of made me want to change my mind about moving it i moved it a few inches you don't want to move them too much uh, if you are going to be moving your hives you don't want to move them too much because you want the bees that are out and as you can see bees are flying they are really coming and going from every single one of these colonies we've even actually seen some pollen on the back legs of some of these hives. Makes sense, you've got some uh, marigold, dandelion, that sort of thing that are still in bloom this time of year. Uh, and so it would make sense that they are gathering some pollen. But they're all flying. It's crazy how heavy they're flying right now. So, what was I saying? Dang. I'm, I completely just spaced out on what I was telling you. Uh, I got excited about them flying, but boy, I'm done. I like, I'm, I am out to lunch on that thought. What was I saying? I've often thought about doing these videos with like some sort of script or a set of notes that can help keep me on track. I don't have the, uh, patience or real forethought for that i'm not going to sit down and write notes i'm going to that's kind of why i want to get to a thousand viewers on youtube so that i can just do these things live 
and off the cuff. I don't want to have to, you know, I've, I've got to learn the editing process. I talked to, I told you I was going to talk to my stepdaughter. She's got a friend of hers that's going to come over and actually teach me how to do the video editing. We actually have a date set for that now, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to have to do that all the time, so I'd rather just do these videos live. The consequence of that is that sometimes I just forget what I'm talking about. So, oh well. We have gone ahead and grabbed some short sticks and done a little bit more block to the entrance here. We're just trying to keep as much of that direct wind out as we can. You can see that some of these girls are actually in the process of trying to uh, get reacquainted or get acquainted with their new entrance. Um, not really sure what's going on there, but they are all over her. I don't see any stinging. They may just be cleaning, but that usually happens inside the hive. She doesn't seem to be trying to resist them. I guess at any point she could fly off if she chose to. Anyway, and that's the only place I see that going on. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and move out of their little flight path here, though, because a couple of them have really decided that they like my eyeballs. So the purpose of the video is to just kind of bring everybody up to date on the loss of those two hives. Uh, it was, it's been suspected for a little while that we were losing them. Yesterday I even went into the hives uh, without any smoke or a hive tool just to kind of get a glance at them. I did see that we had a population, but end of the day, a population doesn't necessarily mean you have a queen. The fact that they weren't flying was my first clue that we had a problem. Uh, even down here on this second from the left hive, uh, from my, our perspective, second from the left, uh, even this hive doesn't have much, but I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but I just saw a bee go in and she had pollen on her back leg. There is, in fact, activity here. So that's telling me that the, uh, it's a queen right hive. In fact, I just saw pollen again. Let's get down here and get a little bit closer while we talk and see if we can't see some of this pollen coming in. Um, but this activity tells me that these, this hive is, for this time of year, an active hive. Maybe not the strongest hive. Yep, there's some uh, pollen right there. You see that? She just walked in. So the fact that they're still gathering resources and it's not just the food that we have set for them down at the, um, I pointed as if y'all could see it. It's not just the uh, sugar syrup that we have down there. They're actually coming in with the protein supplement. They don't need that protein supplement right now. They actually use that in raising the brood. And right now they're not going to have a whole lot of brood going in. In fact, they shouldn't have any brood at this point. Uh, each one of those frames in the brood chamber should be empty or emptying. Uh, and the queen is not laying at this time. Uh, get halfway into winter. We've talked about this before. Get halfway into winter. Once it starts to get really cold. Uh, that and they they need to actually be the most conservative. That's when she's actually going to start laying real heavy and uh, filling up these frames with brood. The bees will start to consume the honey for energy. They'll start making the uh, royal jelly using the pollen and honey mix and uh, all that kind of stuff. They'll get all of that going. They'll get these new larvae fed. They'll start generating a lot of heat to make sure that they can keep the inside of the hive and the, the larvae themselves warm. And that's when we, we risk losing some of these colonies to starvation. So we'll have to make sure that if we have warm days, we'll get in here and get some food to them. Or we'll find some way to make sure that we get some food inside that hive uh, if, once they start to get kind of light. Because what we don't want to do is lose any more hives. We feel like we've lost, you know, the three that we've lost so far, we feel like we've made our sacrifice. We don't want to do that anymore. But they'll start consuming all of those resources. So the pollen that they're bringing in now is in preparation for midwinter when they start preparing for spring. 
Um, she's going to have a lot of laying to do uh, to build these colonies back up. Dad and I actually just before I started this uh, Facebook Live, right before he left, we started talking about how we intend to give them every uh, opportunity we can in order to um, get those populations increased. One of the things that I just noticed down here on this end colony, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, just at a glance on the video, but hey Angie, uh, but on this colony or on this box, you know, stack of boxes, I just saw a yellow jacket flying around. The fact that there is no queen, the fact that there is no brood in there, there's nothing that makes this colony feel like a colony to them, means that they're going to be far less defensive. And so bees from other colonies, uh, yellow jackets, that sort of thing, uh, pests, predators, they're all going to start coming in and trying to snag those resources. We know that's going to happen. Uh, you got to take my word for it. We're not thrilled that that's going to happen. It is the way of nature. And so we are, in some case, uh, in some, to some degree, we're staying out of the way of that. But really what we're trying to do is just allow them to run their course. Because at, a, at this, you know, we, I mean, we sit here and we'd be mad at the yellow jackets for trying to get in there and get those resources but really that's all we're trying to do too we're just biding our time to go in and get at those resources so that we can strengthen the other colonies when the time comes so how can i be mad at something for doing exactly what i'm planning to do um i don't know if we have any questions or not but i just kind of wanted to give you guys an update uh since we did just talk yesterday about those two colonies I wanted to give you an update about the loss of those two colonies but how we in fact intend to turn around and use those that loss to increase our stock and you know build them up make them stronger make them better uh, right down here you see a lot of activity out here on this porch again we uh, we closed off more of the entrance than had been closed as you can see Right here, this block of wood was what we were using initially to block it off. Yeah, girl, I hear you. Uh, to block it off. But then we've also added a little bit more of a stick in there. So they're coming in to where they're used to an entrance. Uh, <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> God, another Disney movie reference. Y'all are something. Uh, so yesterday I talked about my... NRA pocket knife hoping that the NRA would send me a, a free gun or something of course I don't expect they're gonna do it but it certainly wouldn't hurt my feelings <clears throat> hint 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 but thanks to Angie and Becky I feel like I'm gonna get a cease and desist order from Disney because I haven't said anything positive about them yet anyway uh, so we got that entrance blocked off the bees are coming in they're expecting an entrance and they're coming into that stick instead and they're like what the hell is going on heck is going on here y'all watch your mouths uh, they're wondering what's going on they'll figure it out they'll be able to get inside uh, <laughs> they'll be able to get inside and uh, once that new path is mapped out there won't be any problem you won't have this build up on the front anymore in fact you can actually see it's kind of decreasing it'll build back up again as more foragers come back and again don't expect that stick to be there right now and again once they figure it out they will uh everybody will come in expecting to go right to that entrance and that'll be that they'll be done uh and we will be doing that for these colonies up in the front as well um, these two right here with just the holes in it we're probably in the, and then back here in the back we're probably gonna uh, the two back there in the back probably gonna leave them alone uh, those holes are plenty small enough uh, and uh, they block off enough of the draft that we don't really have to worry about it too much. But for the rest of them, we will be doing... Oh, well, here you go. We blocked this one off too. And you can see that they're kind of bunched up there as well. Um, but they'll just... They'll figure it out. I think that one down there on the end is our most heavily populated i think that's that's a determination that we had made earlier most heavily populated and so it would stand to reason that we're going to have a lot more front porch activity from them than we would from 
any of these other hives. All right, does anybody have any? Yeah, I mean, who would refuse one? I mean, seriously. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even have to be an expensive one. Don't give me a cheap one that's going to blow up in my hand. Uh, but, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Don't give me a cheap one, but send me a gun. That'd be nice. All right, so does anybody have any questions about the bees uh, at this time? If not, I have given you what information I wanted you to have, uh, and I can't really think of anything else to discuss. I will ask this question. You know, we're going into winter. Uh, the bees are going to become less and less and less active, so... You know, right now I can do these videos and I can record out at the bee yard and we can see them coming and going. We can see them flying. We can still see them working outside. But the time for that is rapidly coming to a close. I don't want to stop doing these lives, but um, I don't really have the background to show off. Uh, I'm not necessarily interested in putting my gorgeous face on the camera, uh, but, you know... Um, there's some winterizing or there's some winter work that needs to be done. We've got to put some supers together. We've got to put frames together, foundation wax and all that kind of stuff in. If you guys would be interested in seeing that process, I don't think I would mind setting up a, I just bought a tripod to actually facilitate some of these recordings that we're doing or some, some of these lives that we're doing. Uh, so I wouldn't mind setting up a tripod and actually walking you guys through some of those processes if you would be interested in that. But I'm going to kind of need y'all to let me know uh, if that's a thing that you would be interested in. Um, I mean, you know, if you've ever showed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I know. You've been yelling at me about a tripod for, uh, for quite some time now. Uh, even before I started doing the YouTube channel, when I was just doing Facebook Lives, you yelled at me about a tripod. So I finally listened to you, Becky. Thank you very much for that. Oh, that does remind me. Uh, my niece, Anna, sent me a, uh, a video yesterday. I did repost it. It was uh, one of those TikTok things, uh, Becky, that you were talking about. But it was a video of a beekeeper who had just lost, according to what he had typed in his caption, $40,000 in bees and material due to uh, pesticides being sprayed. And so Anna was asking me if that was actually a, a valid thing. Like, does that actually happen? And I told her that, uh, you know, I, I talked to her about it. And then I uh, actually thanked her for reaching out to me and asking that question. I told her I would bring it up on my next Facebook Live. Uh, completely forgot. I didn't even think about it until just now. But here we are at my next Facebook Live. So, yeah, that's actually a thing. More so, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all remember a few years ago, but the big, you know, media frenzy scare was the you know, sudden colony collapse and beekeepers were showing up to their bee yards and they were finding entire colonies just completely vanished. Uh, the boxes were still there, the frames were still there, but there was no brood and there were no bees. And so the, the terrifying name that was given to it by the media was sudden colony collapse syndrome. And you're just basically walking out to uh, uh, dead bees, dead colonies. Uh, and then... You know, other th other times you'd come out and you'd find bees, uh, you know, on the ground around your uh, the hives and all that kind of stuff, dead. Uh, and so, yeah, a lot of things, that's why we work as hard as we do. That's one of the reasons why I try to raise awareness through these videos. But uh, a lot of the things that we f focus on is how to not lose the bees. And we talk about, you know, a, traditionally it's a 30% loss expectation every year. However depending on your location, depending on a uh, given set of criteria, you can in fact have 100% loss. Oh, looky here. There's a, uh, looks like some nectar or something has dripped onto this front porch and the bees are sharing space with the yellow jacket. Uh, they like the sweet sugary stuff as well. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, losing your bees, walking out to your bee yard and finding that, um, honestly, depending on your location, a freaking bear comes in and knocks it over to get at the honey or, 
uh, deer tries to scratch its antlers on what looks to be the tree trunk or whatever the case is and you walk out and you know the bees are all but dead because of rutting or other natural occurrences yeah that's all a concern but honestly for the bee uh, for the beekeepers who do pollination services so you take your bees out to somebody's fields whether it's um, corn or fruit or whatever the case is that you're pollinating you take those bees out there usually there is an understanding between the farmer and the beekeeper that when the farmer is going to be doing any kind of pesticide spraying the beekeeper will be informed with enough notice so that they can actually get their bees away from that property because most of those pesticides are in fact dangerous to the bees even though that nobody in their right mind considers bees to be pests certain people with allergies certain people with a lack of understandings you know yeah sure they're gonna consider them to be pests but we forgive them because they don't know any better but as for everybody else bees aren't pests the pesticides are designed to kill insects bees are in fact insects so uh that causes a great deal of loss and what happens is those bees get caught up in those pesticides while they're out at the given plant whatever it is the fruit tree or whatever they're pollinating uh, and then sadly they survive long enough to bring that pesticide back to the colony they go inside they walk on that wax uh, it's the pesticide then spreads to the rest of the bees who are also walking on that very same wax and when bees are dying they tend to try to leave the hive um, so when they sense that their time is up they try to get out of the hive they're just keeping the hive clean so that somebody else doesn't have to waste the energy to drag them out uh, very noble of them huh so anyway what happens for the beekeeper is they walk up and they find 10 to 50,000 bees on the ground outside the entrance of a hive and then they open it up and they find all of the bees that can't fly um, dead on the inside it's up to the beekeeper and the farmer to communicate with each other uh, I don't know anything about that man's situation as far as what kind of communication he had with the farmers in his area I can imagine if you've got forty thousand dollars worth of uh, product whether it's bees or bee equipment in an area, you're probably going to be communicating with all of the farmers within a two mile radius of your bee yard. That just makes sense to me. That's what we do. That's what any beekeeper I've ever known does. I imagine that that's what this beekeeper did as well. So I don't know if it was malicious. Sadly, that happens. Uh, you know, so anyway, uh, be aware. If you are aware of bees in an area, uh, if they're in hives, you know, I, most beekeepers are like me. They'd love to talk to you about them. Uh, they certainly want to sell you some honey. So reach out to them, get to know them. Um, but really, it's just kind of be aware, share the videos, that sort of thing, uh, so that people are aware that even you spray pesticides in your yard you got a backyard garden all of that kind of stuff if you see bees on your plants on your flowers at any given time spraying those flowers with pesticides is probably an incredibly bad idea those pesticides are uh, not immediately lethal to the bees if they are I mean it's sad to say it's, or it sounds sad to hear but you know if they are immediately lethal to the bees honestly that's a good thing at least that uh, she can't take that back to the colony at that point um, but most of the pesticides are not going to be immediately lethal so maybe reevaluate your use of pesticides maybe research into your uh, pesticide choices a little bit more honestly I, I'm gonna tell you I don't know that much about individual pesticides I would happily research them for or with you um, so that I could learn more I don't um, I don't use them so I don't tend to know much about them I tend to kind of just use a blanket statement you're better off finding more natural ways I mean let's face it everything has its predator so if you're dealing with moles in your yard 
do something to get rid of the grub worms because that's the only thing that attracts those moles to your yard, that sort of thing. But you don't have to do pests, uh, uh, pesticides. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's a very real thing. That poor fella uh, and another beekeeper about a quarter of a mile down the road from that bee yard, both beekeepers took heavy losses because of someone's errant, uh, inerrant use of um, pesticides. They just sprayed it out and uh, without any concern, care or concern for um, what was going on, to, what, what, it might, what effect it might have had on the bees, if they even knew that the bees were there. Who knows? All right, so again, uh, like my video, comment on the video, send me an email if you want to. I've already said it before, but my email is hunsuckerbees at gmail.com. Uh, you can send me Facebook or, uh, yeah, Facebook Messenger uh, messages. Whatever the case is, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the videos that I'm putting out there, uh, I would love to hear them. Ideas that you have, uh, I would love to hear those too so that we can uh, address them. Uh, otherwise, subscribe to my page if you haven't already. Share the daylights out of my videos and encourage others to uh, also subscribe to my page and share those videos. It would be phenomenal. Thank you so much for that. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys and talk to you the next time. Bye now.